two people have been killed and 55 others injured as an explosion ripped through a busy restaurant in the Chinese city of Hangzhou. Authorities believe it was a gas explosion. Fire engulfed the shop, sending plumes of smoke into the air. Passengers on a nearby bus were also caught in the blast. Those injured were taken to hospital. Twelve are said to be in a serious condition. Firefighters were quick to respond and have since put out the blaze. Explosions are fairly common in China as safety rules aren't often enforced. Central government has pledged to improve checks to avert such accidents. Austria's foreign minister Sebastian Kurz says Italy should stop allowing illegal migrants from reaching the mainland. He said allowing their movement is giving them a gateway to Europe. The comments were made during a meeting with his Italian counterpart Angelino Alfano in Vienna. It's estimated Italy has admitted around 500,000 refugees and migrants since 2014, and the numbers continue to grow. Earlier this month, the Italian Foreign Ministry summoned the Austrian ambassador to Rome after Vienna said it was ready to deploy up to 750 troops at the Brenner Pass very soon, unless the flow of migrants from Italy diminishes. If Italy were to continue its transfers to the mainland, not only will Central Europe be overwhelmed, but drownings will continue, Kurtz said, adding that rescue operations in the Mediterranean should not be a ticket for Central Europe. Kurt said the meeting with Alfano was productive, although they didn't share the same position. Turkey has reacted angrily to pressure from Germany to release the six human rights activists it's continuing to hold in pre-trial detention, one of them a German national. Berlin has warned there will be economic penalties, and it's also issued travel warnings for tourists heading to Turkey's Mediterranean beaches. In response, Turkey's presidential spokesman said Germany was being disrespectful against the Turkish judiciary. This is being disrespectful against a country such as Turkey that will not share its independence and sovereignty with anyone. They will respect the judiciary here. We strongly condemn statements saying German citizens coming to Turkey are not safe. Both countries are NATO allies, which further complicates the downward trend in their relations. Germany's foreign minister said he wanted Turkey to halt its path towards authoritarianism after the government cracked down following last year's failed coup. We expect a return to European values, the respect for freedom of opinion and the press. We continue to have a strong interest in good relations with Turkey. It was the detention of Peter Stoydner, a German human rights campaigner, as well as senior staff from Amnesty International, that finally spurred Germany to react. But before then, the government had arrested more than 50,000 people after last year's failed coup. Greek hotel and restaurant employees have called a 24-hour strike over what they say is a deterioration of workers' rights, as record numbers of tourists arrive in the country, boosting the industry. Greece expects to welcome 300 million foreign tourists in 2017, bringing in revenue worth 14 billion euros. Tourism employs around one-fifth of the country's workforce. The growth of tourism, with 30 million tourists, that we're told is supposed to benefit not only the employers but us in the country, is a big lie. We work very hard and they give us nothing. Our average salary is just 420 euros all over the country, and they tell us that with these salaries we will have better days. Anti-austerity strikes are frequent in Greece, but fears the strike would cause disruption to service at hotels and tourist sites were unfounded as turnout was low. I think workers all over don't benefit necessarily from the high-end tourist dollars. Like, we just checked into a very nice hotel, and I'm sure the staff there is not going to get much of what we're paying. The employees in the tourist industry went on a 24-hour strike, but the majority of hotel businesses worked normally. The fear of private sector workers that they might lose their jobs mean they avoid participating in such protests.
Poland's lower house of parliament has passed a controversial law that gives the government more power over the Supreme Court. It would mean the removal and replacement of all Supreme Court judges. Last week, the ruling Law and Justice Party passed plans for politicians to have the power to appoint judges. The opposition says it will erode the independence of the judiciary and undermine democracy. And although the Conservative Law and Justice Party, or PIS, now needs to take the bill to the upper house, the party has a majority in both houses of parliament. European Council President Donald Tusk, who used to be Poland's Prime Minister, has called the law backward and wants to meet with Poland's President. But ultimately, there's little the EU can do to alter the passage of a law through an EU country. Hi. Recently, thousands of people have held candlelit protests against the planned bill, asking the president to veto the legislation and arguing that the government could destroy judicial independence and appoint only judges who support the ruling party. É programa com mais de um década de informação.